I have the keys to a 1972 Porsche 911 ST replica, and we have one mile to drive it, give you our impressions. This 911 ST is based on a car that Porsche made back in the late 60s and early 70s and took it racing, the 911 ST. And it's not an RSR, it's its own car, uh, even though it looks very similar. And this one here is gonna be quite the drive with the, the modifications it has and the power it's putting to the ground. It has a three and a half liter flat six with electronic fuel injection, and it looks basically like an RSR engine. It has a 996 GT3 crankshaft to complete that whole setup with 98 millimeter pistons, and it makes about 350 horsepower, which is pretty insane in a, a super lightweight 911 like this one here. On top of that, there's also shorter gearing. This car has a shorter final drive ratio and shorter second, third, and fourth gears. If acceleration is what you want, this car is gonna give it to you. It's been painted in signal orange. Uh, which was a, a color that was uh, period correct at the time. It has the factory Porsche Fuchs wheels that have been refinished to look like RSR wheels. All sorts of other parts to help with cooling. It has Carrera 3.2 oil coolers in the front fenders on either side. They are behind those front grill openings where there's usually a chrome grill. Now the 911 ST didn't come with those grills so that more air could get to the oil coolers. One of the ways you can tell that it's a 72 is that on the uh, passenger side rear fender, you'll see a opening for what looks like would be a gas tank fill opening, but it's actually for the oil. On the inside, so what you see in here is how th they would have come from the factory. That includes the no door for the glove box, the lightweight carpeting, uh, no rear seats. It has the roll bar. Those front seats are 911 ST replica seats with a corduroy insert. To help those sticky tires do the work that they need to do, there's also a revised suspension. So the owner has replaced the front and rear torsion bars with hollow torsion bars. They're 21 millimeters up front, 28 millimeters at the rear, and he also has 18 millimeter anti-roll bars in the car. And so with that, it's time to give the car a drive for one mile and I'll give you my impressions. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Best of all, it's free to do so. Um, I have to say, right off the bat, these seats are actually really comfortable for what they are. It's, you know, very small, old school style seats. No power steering in an older 911 like this, yet it's still very nice and light steering, which I like to feel. So I was gonna go drive the other way for this one mile review, but I want to warm the tires up as the, the owner recommended before we did any of this stuff. Wow, what a car, I can already tell. Easy to downshift. Wow. So it's a very busy ride, but it's not too punishing. You know, going over these bumps, it's taut. It has some compl compliance in it, maybe because these tires are so fat. But it's, it's not that bad. It's a very sporting, stiff ride, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna roll over very much thanks to those anti-roll bars. The brakes are manual brakes, so you have to be very careful when you stop that you know that you have to press the pedal much harder than you would in a normal modern Porsche. Yeah, the steering is very light. Yeah, very tight shifter for sure. Very tight shifter. The, the shift action is very abrupt. It catches very quickly, quickly when you're modulating. Wow, what a car. Off the throttle, the engine braking is nice. So gotta remember 350 horsepower. I'll give him a little uh, go here. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, downshifting, throttle blipping is nice and easy in this car. I'm not gonna drive this car super fast because I just wanna get a taste of it. And I think uh, you can tell how high strung this car is. It would take a little bit to get used to. So the engine is super, super smooth. You know, uh, it doesn't feel like a, a clunky three and a half liter. It's a very sewing machine smooth engine. Yeah, the car doesn't roll very much thanks to those inner roll bars. Yeah, a lot of power on tap. A lot of torque because it's that three and a half liter. Wow, so full throttle, almost at seven, and it, that's just, what an amazing car. Now I'll try a downshift. Yeah, heel toe is right there very well. The thing that makes it hard is those manual brakes. So when you're heel towing, you have to mash down real hard on the brakes and then blip the throttle lightly, which is a very 
odd feeling when you're trying to uh, gingerly blip the throttle to get the correct revs. I have a bit more time behind the car. It's a little easier. I think I have the, wow, I think I have the uh, shift action down pretty well. Probably the biggest part of this car to get used to or any older 911, especially one with this in performance, is the fact that it has manual brakes. I think that's the, the one thing that feels very strange to me, not having driven too many cars without power brakes. So the steering position is a little bit off, but not too bad. My knee hits the bottom of the steering wheel. I kind of wish the steering wheel were a little bit higher, but that's just kind of how they are. You know, you get this one setting and you stick with it. So the owner's a bit taller than me. He said he bangs his knees here a little bit. So I guess you just learn to live with it and, and how awesome the car is in every other way. There's no way I'm going up towards all the way to seven or past it. That's, this car has plenty of power for me to enjoy up to six, six and a half thousand RPM. What an amazing car. This is a race car. I mean, it was built as an ST replica, a race car, and it feels like one. You could probably take this to the track and lap it all day long and have a ton of fun and no issues. So car show, this car stands out and has so many little details that maybe somebody who isn't in the Porsche world might not catch on at first, but people who are in the know will appreciate, for example, the glove butt box doesn't have any opening. The fact that it's not an RS replica, so it has actual, it has metal bumpers. It's, it's, they're not fiberglass. It has metal 911 ST flares and the paint, the signal orange is just, it pops. This is the car you will see when it drives into a car show. And this, this, is near the top. I'm gonna give this nine and a half for car show. Out of all the cars I've driven for one mile reviews, this is probably the most impressive from a looks look standpoint. And there are just so many details that over time you can learn about the car. So for daily driving, this car will not do well daily driving. It's not something that I would recommend. It's a bit stiff. Tires are on it are old school racing tires. It's very loud. Everybody will be looking at you. You know, all the cell phones will be out. People driving past you will not be paying attention to the road as much as they will be to this car. So for daily driving, this is probably just not a great car for that. I'm gonna give it a four and a half because you could, if you wanted to, this would be a great car to maybe to take to work once or twice per month, but it's not something that would be comfortable. And then you have to think about the value of this kind of car and how nice it is. Just not something you want to drive every single day. For road tripping, I'm going to give this a little bit better because uh, you don't have to worry quite as much about the perils of daily driving on, on urban streets as much. And it is comfortable enough to go on a road trip. And it's something that I would really want to road trip to something like Porsche Parade or, or Works Reunion. And you could be fairly comfortable. You can probably fit a little bit of luggage in, into the front and a bit in the back. And you know, your uh, passenger would be very comfortable. Just not something that I would take on every road trip. So for this, I'm gonna give it a six for road trip. Now for fun factor, another car, I wish I had more time with it, but I can already tell greatness is here, the suspension, the engine is amazing. Learning all the, the quirks and, and foibles of, of how you operate this kind of car would be a fun experience in itself and it would take a while. I'm sure this would be great at an autocross and could set very nice lap times. I'm gonna give this a 9.25 for fun factor because it's just, wow. What a car. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Other than that, I uh, hope to see you next time.